begin in five minutes. Please take your seats if you haven't already done so, and please silence all electronic devices. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Kelly Barracks, Stuttgart, Germany. I'm Master Sergeant Tara Zabikowski, and I will be your narrator for today's special Operations Command Africa Change of Command Ceremony, in which Major General John M. Hicks will relinquish command to Brigadier General Dalton R. M. Anderson. General Thomas D. Walthauser, Commander, United States Africa Command, will serve as the presiding official. We are honored to have as our special guests today, representatives from many nations from whom we are proud to partner from around the globe. We would also like to welcome senior leaders from our fellow Special Operation Commands, United States Africa Command, and our components. Let us not forget to welcome our beloved Special Operations Command Africa families, who truly carry the heaviest load and enable us to do the important things we do. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the arrival of the official party and, re and rendering of the honors, and remain standing for the presentation of the colors, the singing of national anthem, and the invocation. <laughs>
Please stand at ease, stand at rest. Lord God, I come before you this morning and I solicit your blessings on this ceremony and the transition of leadership in the road ahead for Special Operations Command in Africa. As we celebrate Major General Hicks' legacy of distinguished service, I offer gratitude for your protective overwatch serving across a wide spectrum in complex, hostile, and oftentimes foreboding environments. We are grateful for his leadership, mission success, and your divine provisions through the tenure of his command. I solicit your blessings this morning over him, Lauren, and the kids as they undergo a change in mission and return to Florida. May Team Hicks collectively share in the joy, the pride, and the satisfaction for their collective sacrifice and contributions to our nation during his command and career. And now, Lord, I again request your divine guidance and protected protective overwatch over Special Operations Command Africa as Brigadier General Anderson assumes the helm. Give him wisdom and guidance for the complex and multifaceted problem sets that lie ahead. Help him to build the dream team with his staff as they face unique challenges in the future. And again, Lord, I request you be the ultimate security, providing protective overwatch for the quiet professionals and literally the crown jewel of the United States Special Operations Command here in Stuttgart. As they continue liberating and defending those in oppression, amen. Thank you, Lieutenant Thompson and Chaplain Klein. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, General Waldhauser, Commander, United States Africa Command. Good morning, everyone. Um, I was telling uh, General Hicks and General Anderson before we start this morning, just because it's air conditioning here doesn't mean we can take the speeches for hours and hours. But it feels good to be in here. You know, for some of you who are guests today, uh, before I begin my formal remarks, all winter long we were out there in what we call the prison yard gym as they were putting in the air conditioning and so forth. And in the middle of the winter here, nobody was too excited about that. But on today, when it's you know, 90 degrees and plus, it's very nice that uh, we have the facility today. And by the way, I want to thank uh, SOCAF. It's not part of my remarks, but behind the walls here, there's some new additions, some equipment that you guys, Mark, have put in, and uh, we really appreciate that. And uh, as the sign says on the marquee outside, when it's hot, it's cool in the gym, so this will be ready for working out about lunchtime today, so I expect to see some of you back in here later on today. Good morning, everyone. Distinguished guests, and Admiral Szymanski was representing Special Operations Command from Tampa today. We have senior leaders here uh, from the Special Operations community. I also want to recognize Command Sergeant Major Marsh, ladies and gentlemen, all the service members who are here today. And I also want to recognize uh, General Anderson's parents who flew all the way here from Michigan trying to get a little of the German weather and at least you escaped the rain and maybe not the, the heat from uh, from Michigan. But welcome here. I know your, your family and your son especially is happy uh, that you're here, that you're here. I know most of the crowd understands this, but I want to say at the outset, we'll, refer, we'll refer to USAC Africa from here, here forward in my remarks. And of course, we're talking about the Special Operations Command of US Africa. I also want to mention Colonel Defner, our German host here this morning. We want to thank you for your partnership on the African continent here in Stuttgart and as well at Bonnwold where some of the special operations forces are based. We appreciate the hospitality extended to the service members and their families stationed here in Germany. This morning, we honor Major General Mark Hicks and the accomplishments of SOC Africa while simultaneously welcoming Brigadier General Dogman Anderson as he assumes command this morning. As we meet here today, SOC Africa has over 1,200 personnel in nine African countries dedicated to strengthening post-nation defense capabilities, working side-by-side -side with partners to counter violent extremism and protecting U.S. interests across the continent. SOC Africa trains, advises, and assists African security forces to confront trans-regional threats in some of the most inhospitable territory on the planet. And we remember those soldiers who made the ultimate sacrifice over the past two years while valiantly serving beside our partners. We honor the courage and commitment of Sergeant First Class Jeremiah Johnson, 
Staff Sergeant Dustin Wright, Staff Sergeant Brian Black, Sergeant David Johnson, and Staff Sergeant Alexander Conrad. They are truly representative of the men and women of South Africa, often working in small groups under austere conditions on the continent. We shall never forget them. The soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Marines of South Africa are perhaps the most versatile and flexible individuals U.S. Africa Command has on the continent. And of course, as we all know, a land mass the size of three and a half times of the United States. Almost daily, these devoted men and women interact with U.S. ambassadors, country teams, Western allies, and African colleagues, truly embracing the concept of with partners to enable the accomplishment of the U.S. Africa Command and U.S. Special Operations Command national security efforts all across the continent. General Hicks leveraged the value of SOC Africa's trained, advised, and assist missions at higher echelons within our partner's chain of command to strengthen our networks, build the capability of African security forces, and increase U.S. access and influence on the continent. Let's use Somalia to illustrate this point. During the past two years, SOC Africa adjusted its approach to focus on guiding upper-level tactical command and control elements and maneuver elements to better enable our Somali National Army partners. Instead of accompanying Somali units on every mission, SOC Africa personnel advised and assisted from within operational centers, incorporating technology and intelligence, surveillance, and reconnaissance to better mentor and support the partner forces. These efforts advanced our objectives to set the conditions for security to take hold and to transition responsibility to do so from the African Union mission in Somalia to the Somalia National Army. Furthermore, SOC Africa's commitment to teaching and building the Advanced Infantry Battalion, or DANAB, which translates to the word lightning in Somalia, added the ability of the federal government of Somalia to disrupt and degrade the subversive operations of Al-Shabaab and ISIS Somalia. The dedication of SOC Africa contributed to the legitimacy of the federal government of Somalia and in assisting them in moving towards a secure environment that will ultimately foster economic growth and development. Somalia's long-term stability and prosperity remain vital to the wider peace throughout the region and is important to the United States national security interests. This concept of security force assistance at higher echelons was also replicated in West Africa where SOC Africa personnel are developing within our partners at the operational level the confidence and capacity necessary to counter the threat posed by rising extremism and violence in that part of the continent. In the Sahel, a transition zone between the Sahara Desert and the savannas stretching across the continent from Senegal to Sudan, South Africa's partnership with the Nigerians has created one of the region's most mature special operations forces who contend with growing instability on all of their borders. Thanks to the hard work by South Africa, the Nigerians are now not only capable of integrating and utilizing intelligence and defense, but in commanding and controlling forces to take the fight to ISIS and Al-Qaeda aligned groups on their borders. The impact of the small footprint of special operations personnel has been significant, as indicated by a rising demand for more Western special operations forces trained forces and increasing financial investment and security assistance from our European allies. And we are seeing similar accomplishments elsewhere on the continent where SOCAF bilateral engagements have been vital to our strategy of supporting an African-owned, African-led response to combat insecurity, facilitate humanitarian operations, and restore the authority of the state. Likewise, in North Africa, the advising and training investment made by SOC Africa to enhance Tunisia's security institutions has paid significant dividends in improving its armed forces' ability to fight extremist groups while at the same time strengthening American influence in the region. Today, thanks to the men and women of this command, 
Tunisia is one of our top security partners in North Africa, hosting multinational exercises and leading security operations. But in order to be truly successful in, in promoting security and stability across the continent, we must first and foremost cultivate strong, trusting, and lasting relationships with our allies and partners. General Hicks, during your time in command, you elevated and reinforced some of our most critical relationships on the ground, increasing synchronization with not only African militaries, but also Canadian, Australian, New Zealand, French, and other European soft partners. For example, in Mali, through your close collaboration with France's Operation Barcane, the U.S. supports African-led, French-assisted security and stabilization operations by integrating key intelligence and non-lethal support. These efforts are continuing to pressure extremist groups, expand the operating space, and enable employment of our development and economic tools as counters to the root causes of conflict. The strengthening of relationships by your command further manifested itself in the abundant participation in South Africa's exercises, as was, as was characterized by this year's flintlock exercise, co-hosted by Burkina Faso and Mauritania. Over 2,000 participants, representing 15 African and 19 Western countries, three U.S. interagency and four intergovernmental organizations, focused on building the capacity to plan, execute, and command and control counter-violent extremist operations at the operational level of war. This superbly designed exercise by SOC Africa put Africans, such as the Moroccans, out in front as the primary trainers of other Africans, deepening the ownership of our partners in solving some of Africa's most complex challenges. Africans training Africans. That is a huge step forward in achieving self-reliance by Special Operations Security Forces on the African continent. Flintlock was typical of many of South Africa's tremendous engagements, which represent some of the best tools we have to enhance partner defense capabilities and develop procedures to increase interoperability with U.S. forces and others. Mark, not only did you nurture strong partnerships with our African and Western allies, but you also fostered a solid and impactful relationship between AFRICOM and SOC Africa, which has proven vital to achieving the objectives of our overall campaign plan. To illustrate this, over the past year, SOC Africa has made significant progress in reducing its persistence, in persistence presence in locations where our African partners have an effect graduated from long-term security assistance programs, such as in Tunisia, Senegal, and Cameroon. And you reduce the need for static deployments by using episodic engagements to maintain relationships where we can accept risk against localized threats, threats which did not jeopardize security of our allies or the homeland. This is appreciated because it supports DOD's goal of optimization to increase the readiness of the joint force with a focus on great power competition and major high-end combat operations. And it enables U.S. Africa Command to right-size its counterterrorism activities to align with the national security priorities of our national defense strategy. However, our mission does not change outright in North Africa, the Sahel, Lake Chad, or Somalia as we continue to focus on intelligence sharing and building capacity for our partners to take the lead in establishing security, stabilizing their borders, and addressing their regional crisis. General Hicks, you've done a superb job in leading these men and women who employ both diplomacy and force in very complex and challenging environments. Your welcoming of guest speakers and think tanks from academia to discuss the drivers of conflict and civil military friction deep in South Africa's understanding of the security challenges on the continent. In a few months, we we'll retire from the Air Force after 33 years of dedicated service to our country, to the Department of Defense, and to the men and women of U.S. Special Operations Command. Over your entire career, you've epitomized the values of integrity, selfless service, and excellence. 
virtues which made you a very successful leader. Speaking for the entire audience here today, Mark, I would like to thank you for your many contributions over the years, and we are proud of your service and commitment to our country. It's also an honor this morning to recognize the special team who supports you. Lauren is here today, but the children who are very smart, by the way, said they wanted to wait for the movie, but so they, 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 there's something to be said for that. You can tell them I think that's a great idea. But anyways, Maddie and Connor are not here. They chose to be other places, but if they would have known it was their condition, maybe they would have maybe they would have changed their mind. But the bottom line is, Lauren, you as a, a wife and the two children have endured a lot and made many sacrifices over the years with deployments, moves, and missed family events. So we thank you and we thank the children for their service as well. And I'm sure they look forward to spending more time with you as you guys move to Florida. So at this point, I'd like to give a big round of applause for General Dixon and family. General Dogman Anderson on assuming command today, and we welcome Elizabeth, his wife, and his two daughters, Hala and Leela, who came to Germany from Hawaii nonstop, probably 24 hours ago. So, you, you know, the, the good news is, I'm not sure what time it is, but it'll all work itself out here uh, in the next few days. And I know Germany's a long way away from Hawaii, where you just came from, the beaches, the tropical lifestyle, but Germany offers a vibrant culture, picturesque sites, rich in history and a very welcoming, welcoming population. And as you'll find out, there's nearly a fest for every occasion of the manageable. And I'm sure you'll attend some during your time here. Peter Joe Anderson brings with him over 15 years of experience within the special operations community, leading at the squadron, group, and wing levels. He's an accomplished academic across a broad spectrum from international affairs to low intensity conflict an expertise which will serve him well when dealing with the complexities and challenges of operating in the United States AFRICOM area of responsibility. Doug, I am confident you will lead both capably and with integrity as you further the important and demanding missions of SOC Africa. I also know that you'll take care of the most valuable asset we have here today, that's our service members, the civilians who work here, and their families. Brigadier General Anderson, we are pleased to welcome you aboard as the new commanding general of SOC Africa. And although I'm going to hesitate to give a round of applause before you've done anything, but I want to give General Anderson a round of applause. So, ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude this morning, I want to thank you for joining us for this ceremony. Sock Africa's success is a testament to the character and judgment of the men and women of this command who are assisting, instructing, and motivating our African partners to challenge those who attempt to destabilize and create chaos. The operations and missions of Sock Africa are some of the most powerful tools we have in our military inventory which enables the United States diplomatic and development efforts to foster economic growth and good governance. So thank you again everybody for your presence today. Thank you for inviting me to be part of the ceremony and I wish everybody all the success to include the outgoing and incoming commanders. Semper Fidelis, thank you all very much. Hey, first, uh, thanks to Rachel for the great rendition of the National Anthem. Um, in addition to being a, an outstanding, intelligent, professional, and Arabic speaker, um, a great athlete, and signal intelligence writer with more combat time than I do, that's pretty neat. Uh, thanks to the uh, Honor Guard as well and the band for all of the you do. And Chaplain, thanks for your invitation as well. Um, and to Stacey White and the team that put all this together and all of the people that set this up. I know it takes a lot of work and thank you for all your efforts. Fortunately, you deserve to listen so many of the world better. And, and I do have to say that I'm a little disappointed in the lack of the stage because I've been practicing for months for the box jump too. 
the stage. And some of you will understand that. If you don't, that's probably okay. Um, Tara, thanks for being the voice of Africa or South Africa. Um, Dad, you'll understand that we all work for her at some level. And Tara, thanks for all that you've done to get the front office and the community in shape and for coming out. Jamal Hazard, thank you for your remarks and your leadership. Uh, this is Walt Hazard, welcome. Adam Smancy, thanks for being here. Thanks for representing SOCOM. Um, and Tim, thanks for your friendship and leadership for the years we've served together. It has been a privilege and an honor, and there's no one from SOCOM that I would rather have here than you. Your leadership and insights will be critical to SOCOM as we deal with the substantial cultural <coughs> problems that we face today. That's right, thanks for being here. I know you made it, but that's great. And, and, uh, and CZ, glad to see you're out of the hospital, or you're too old for that stuff. So. <laughs>
turn the tide of the South's insurgency in the Sahara remains to be seen. What is less certain, however, what is, what is certain, however, is that the loss of Staff Sergeant Brian Black, Staff Sergeant Dustin Wright, Staff Sergeant Jeremiah Johnson, and Sergeant David Johnson, was not the invader. Their sacrifice led to an intent an international under awakening about the plight of the Sahel. Into an ongoing discussion about the best ways to address the challenges there. And as we speak, momentum is building to address the root causes of the Salafist insurgency. And we owe it to these brave men to get it right. Similarly, we owe Staff Sergeant Alex Conrad the commitment to continue the mission for which he gave his life. Alex was killed on June 8, 2018, about 45 kilometers north of Kismayan, southern Somalia, along the Lower Juba River, while he was helping to establish the combat outpost that now bears his name. The campaign that he was supporting has freed over a thousand Somali families to return to their homes and freed them from al Shabaab terror. It's extended the legitimate government of Somalia deep into al Shabaab territory. Thus, Comp Conrad stands as a bastion of security and beacon of hope for thousands of Somalis. Further, and consistent with General Waldhauser's comments, the campaign along the Lower Juba River to Cop Conway demonstrates the wisdom of shifting from counterterrorism strategy. And it's one that disrupts terrorists by targeting individuals and small groups in the hope that governments and development will follow to a focused population centered counterinsurgency strategy. One that clear, clears and holds terminal, directly provides security to the population, and simultaneously provides governance, and development, and developmental support. So, as General Waldhauser mentioned, we're now seeing success similar to the Lower Chipper River along the Chevelle River southwest of Mogadishu. And while Somalia remains a difficult political environment. And Al-Shabaab remains a very capable Al-Qaeda-backed insurgency. Somalia is a much better place today than it was two years ago. And there too, momentum is building for a coherent whole of government approach to address the root causes of insurgency. Also looking back, as if it wasn't hard enough, while South Africa was shifting from a counterterrorism focus to a counterinsurgency strategy, and adjusting our force posture for the, to meet the emerging threat, we received guidance to cut our force, euphemistically termed optimization. So for the first tranche of optimization, we identified missions that were nearing completion on one hand, or those that were not returning results on the other hand, in order to train the force without substantially impacting the mission. Sir, you'll probably be pleased to know that I can report that today the first tranche of optimization is complete. Yet, by adjusting our operating operations and advising at a higher level, at the battalion instead of the platoon or company level, we're now more effective than we were two years ago with less force structure. However, this magic cannot be replicated. We've cut all the fat and some of the muscle. We are as effective and efficient as any SOCOM organization now employ, thus a higher return on investment. The further cuts will directly to great missions that are already operating on the margins. Therefore, along with General Walters, I recommend against further cuts of optimization to Africa. So now 
as I prepare to pass the flag to Colonel Anderson, I know that SOC Gap is doing the right thing, the right way, and for the right reason. I also know that Dad Anderson will have a great team in the SOC Gap for the next week. Dad, I was thrilled to hear that you were following me because we've worked together before. And I hold you in high, right, high regard. Lauren, I wish you, Liz, kids, all the best. And what I am sure will be an exciting and interesting job. And there is, in fact, a fest for every occasion. To the representatives of our Western partners, I want to thank you and your nations for your commitment, comradeship, and leadership across the continent of Africa. I truly enjoyed working with you all. And I'm particularly grateful to our French colleagues for their leadership in the Sahel, their recent rescue of an American citizen, and for presenting me with the Legion of Honors. I am deeply honored and humbled. And I would like to apologize in advance for what the U.S. Um, football team is going to do to France tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it will be okay. I'm also grateful to our German hosts and the spectacular land for their leadership in the year for the soft school. And I'm truly honored to be supported by soft teammates from Belgium, Norway, the United Kingdom, Canada, always keeping it interesting, our Italian counterparts, Australians, Denmark, Ireland, and others. Thank you all for your comradeship has been enormously helpful and it really shows that Western partners can get together and help our African partners as a team. And I'd like to thank the African service components for the critical support for our operations across the continent. And I'd like to make a particular shout out to more for Africa. My friend Major General Bart Sanborn, or I don't know if you're here, but somebody can go to them that you guys have been the only service component to step up and, and support us when we ask, and sometimes before we ask. Thank you, and, and acknowledge that Bart, you clearly embrace Commonox guidance to do more with soft, and I'm very grateful. To the African staff, many of you know that Tango Tango is a searing experience for many of us served to bond us together in a painful shared experience. Many of you, and you know who you are, have been critical in helping us conduct operations all the time. I miss working with you all, particularly with Greg Olson, the Bill West, who have been exceptional teammates. And for Heidi, you being a great travel companion and amazing shopper, personally improving the economic situation in the Sahel. Ask her about it. I'm also blessed, and I've been truly blessed, with an exceptional group of ambassadors and country teams across the continent, and that's just not always the case. So, to my State Department colleagues, and to the Attaché Corps, thank you. It's made my job easier and made us all more effective together. Now, to the men and women of Special Operations Command in Africa, you have accomplished so much with so little, so quickly, and under such difficult circumstances. You've done everything I've asked and more. And I'm enormously grateful and immensely proud of your service. Wish you all the best, and I know that you will continue to excel in general leadership leadership. And then before I thank my family, it says in certain joke here, so um, I would like to make a personal shout out to Colonel Major Bormu, who was unable to make it. He's the Special Operations Command Commander in Niger, and with the upcoming AU summit, he has very serious security issues to deal with. But I would like to thank him for sending the African weather this week. It has been somehow appropriate. But finally, I do want to thank my family. Lauren has put in an enormous amount of energy into trying to improve the community, and particularly our ability to take care of families. She's 
done this while managing two kids in German schools and stepping up to lead a Girl Scout troop, which ironically has been a job similar to my own in many ways. And to make it harder, she's had to bear a disproportionate share of the stress and frustration of my job. Too many nights, I went home with almost nothing left. No patience for the It's our joke here. So, no patience for small children, for Girl Scouts, or German teachers, or any other normal family business. Many other nights I didn't come home at all because I was on the continent or traveling to, uh, traveling to the States. So there's another sort of joke here. So, for those of you who missed coming to the gym this morning and because the door was locked. Sorry, my bad. But you're welcome for getting out of the CCU on Friday. I think that will be an And you are. Well, I'm to say I couldn't have done this without you it is an understatement. I was only, I was able to do this only because of you. Even the kids, Kept me singing through most exasperating professional experience in my life. It gave me the strength to continue the mission. The mission dictated. And now I can move on to something more balanced. You know, and then we gave everything we had to this. And then any success of life that I've had is very much your. Major General Hicks relinquishes the colors to General Waldhauser, thereby, therefore, signifying termination of his command. General Waldhauser presents the colors to the new commander, Brigadier General Anderson, charging him with the responsibility for mission accomplishment and the welfare of his force. 
Brigadier General Anderson, assumes command and returns the colors to Command Sergeant Major Marsh, signifying his acceptance of the command responsibility and the continuation of the mission. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the reading of the official order. Attention to orders. By the authority of Title X, United States Code, Section 164 and 167, the undersigned assumes command of Special Operations Command Africa, Stuttgart, Germany, effective 28 June 2019. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. Brigadier General Dogman R. M. Anderson, Commander, Special Operations Command Africa. The floor is yours. First of all, I appreciate everyone coming out today. General Walhauser, thank you for the warm reception and the ceremony today. Admiral Shemansky, thank you very much for being here. You know, Vectory has been a long time, but it's great to be with you again, serving with you once more. CZ, great to see a friendly face and a friend from the past. Jeremy McCaffrey, who's been to meet you recently. Admiral Pearson, very glad to see you again. And uh, really happy you could make it today. To all the other flag officers, I appreciate making time in a very business busy schedule to come out. I know it wasn't just for me, it was to say for all General Hicks and the witness to change of command. But I really am truly honored and humbled to be here today and to be entrusted with this responsibility. I know these ceremonies are, uh, they have a lot of meaning. I think they're important. They're important professionally and personally. I'm really especially glad my family's here with me. My wife Liz, uh, she's put up with me for 20 years now, 20 years this month. It's a miracle she stayed with me this long, but she does. She continues to do it with a smile, and I appreciate that. I, would, I definitely would not be able to do any of this without her. My daughters, Hala and Lilia, who uh, continue to do this uh, oddly with a smile on their face as I drag them to <laughs> new places, new schools. Uh, separate them from friends, but they always uh, look forward to the new adventure. Of course, the last two have been pretty good in Hawaii and Germany, so that may have been part of the reason they continue to smile. But it's always been good. I really appreciate the fact that my parents are here to mark another milestone in my career. They've made every one. I really do appreciate that, whether that was Albuquerque, Korea, Germany, wherever it may be, they've been there. A long way from uh, the factories and farm, farmland of Ipsy, Michigan. <laughs> Ipsy, Michigan. But I'm really glad they're here. I don't think I've got uh, near what to say that the folks who preceded me did, so I'll keep this quite short. I appreciate the opportunity, and I'm honored to take command of SOC Africa and take the standard from Hank. I'm very honored to uh, wear the SOC Africa patch. I think there's some symbolism that's important in that patch. The dagger that represents special operations, the quiet professionals who do their job quietly with minimal requirements, but with strategic impact. I think the lion's important, represents the strength, determination, and courage to accomplish a task at hand that's often complex and difficult. But more importantly, it represents the intelligence needed to complete that task, and the wisdom to know when to act, when to wait, and when to be patient to achieve a difficult objective. I think most importantly, though, for me, the back is a shield, a shield that protects, protects our nation, its interests, and most importantly, its values and ideals, far forward and freedom's frontier. Values and ideals that are represented by the flag that we all wear on our other shoulder. Values that are shared across borders with partners and allies. Ideals that we aspire to, and the hope that freedom and liberty bring to people around the world. I think these symbols are important to reflect upon as they remind us why we sacrifice and why we choose every day to do what we do. Because we do is we operate, because what we do is we operate in an incredibly complex environment that's only becoming more complex. We no longer just address violent extremists who lash out against freedom. But we now have to balance threats from regional powers who seek to uh, achieve nuclear power to intimidate their neighbors, to compete with peer adversaries who wish to change the world order and disrupt the peace and prosperity that we've enjoyed for the last seven decades. To undermine the values of the very fabric of our nation and our way of life. 
We face these challenges on various levels across the African continent. We're helping build our partners build the capacity to deny safe havens, to confront common threats, and to show that we are the partner of choice in the increasingly competitive world. We provide a global network of operators who can monitor and understand actions of our peer adversaries as they seek to assert themselves globally. We're a network of operators that can provide presence and inform our decision makers in a world that's changing. A world that's changing and the only thing that's clear is that we'll, continue to, that we'll need to engage in a multifaceted effort across all domains on an ever-expanding battlefield. Where we'll need to understand and compete with our adversaries on multiple levels, where information and engagement will often be the primary effort, and partnership with like-minded allies and partners is key. I know this is not an easy effort. I know that we cannot and should not take this on alone, and we'll continue to work closely with the partners and allies that have been and SOCAF has worked to develop. Allies that have been with us for decades, standing side by side, facing threats to our shared values, working with new allies who have been with us confronting violent extremism in Afghanistan and Iraq, working with our partners on the continent to develop their capabilities and capacities. And I have no doubt that we're up to this task because we've been able to come together time and again to confront our adversaries in the defense of liberty, freedom, and human rights. I look forward to continuing these partnerships and cooperation in the future. I look forward to leading one of the best trained and most capable forces in the world, but I realize that we cannot just say that's what we are. We have to earn it. We have to earn it every day. Earn it by working hard, by being humble, and by continuing to adapt to adversaries who continue to work against us. All this while maintaining the professionalism and dedication that defines the United States military. I know General Hicks here is an incredibly capable, mature, dedicated force. I appreciate that. I appreciate the fact that this uh, force is doing great work with very limited resources in a very difficult environment. I also believe that it's incredibly important that we continue to do that, and that we continue to focus on defending the United States, our interests, and those of our allies far forward. I do this because I'm passionate about what I do. I'm passionate about what I do, and I direct my family around the world because I believe in who we are. I believe in who we are as a people. I believe in who we are as a nation. I believe that we do represent something special and that we provide hope and we provide opportunity for many in this world that we will never be able to talk to, that we'll never be able to see, but they look to America for leadership and that's what we we'll continue to provide. I look forward to continuing this and I look forward to taking on the challenges in the future. So thank you. Please stand for the playing of the service medley and remain standing for the departure of the official party.